Hey guys, two days ago I published a video on the Sun Gold Power 6000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now one thing I noted was the high idle consumption when there are no loads connected to the inverter. And many of you pointed out that I did not try or use the power save function of the inverter and that that would save on idle consumption. So you're right, I really should have touched on that topic in the video. However, in this video I will show you how that functionality works and why I don't like it and why I don't find it very useful. So the inverter is now turned on and we are idling at 89 watts, 90 watts. So on the front here, I'm gonna turn the switch to power saver auto. All right, so now you can hear it making a slight hum. Right there. So every three seconds, it sends a small pulse of electricity through the transformer of approximately 250 milliseconds. And it uses that to detect loads that are connected to the output of the inverter. And when it detects load, it will start up the inverter and turn on the normal output. So we can demonstrate that over here. I have two 60 watt incandescent light bulbs connected to the inverter. One's on leg one and one's on leg two. So I'll go ahead and turn one on. And you saw the light blink once, the inverter saw there was a load connected and then it started up. So I'll go ahead and turn that off and the inverter shuts down again. That's pretty cool, right? It saves a lot of power that way because the inverter's not running when there are no loads connected. Not quite yet. The way this works is you need to have a load of at least 25 watts or greater for the inverter to detect it and turn on. Additionally, it's only checking for a load on one of the two legs. So if you don't have the load connected to the right leg, it's not going to see that load and it's not going to turn on. So we can demonstrate that here by turning on the second lamp, which is plugged into the opposing leg of the transformer. See how the bulb continues to flicker as it's pulsing to check for loads, but it's not checking the leg that this light bulb's connected to. It's only checking the leg that this light bulb's connected to. So now if I turn this one on, now it saw the load, it starts up and both bulbs are illuminated. So next, let's take a look at how much power is actually consumed when the inverter is in standby mode. So it's currently 8.56 AM and we're at three watt hours of consumption. Uh, we're going to leave this run for 15 minutes and we'll come back and see how much power we've consumed in that 15 minutes. Multiply that by 4 and that'll tell us our watt hours of idle consumption. Alright, so we're at 912. Uh, I waited an extra minute because this display updates every 60 seconds. So we're at 6 watt hours. We started at 3 watt hours. That means in 15 minutes we have consumed 3 watt hours of energy. Times 4 to give you an hour. That gives us 12 watts of idle consumption. That means if we leave this run in on mode for one hour, we will see approximately 90 watt hours of consumption from the battery. If we leave this in power saver mode for one hour, we will see approximately 12 watt hours of consumption from the battery. Now the manual does say 25 watts or less for power saver mode, so uh, it does fit within that spec. Now the other question that was asked is, you know, let's say I see 90 watts of consumption with no load connected. If I were to connect a 100 watt load, would that consumption, would that self consumption go down? or would I still see 190 watts of consumption? So now we can go ahead and test that as well. So I measured both of these light bulbs at 62 watts with my kilowatt meter. So they're 62 watts each. Our display is currently showing 90 watts of power with no load connected. So let's go ahead and turn on one of the light bulbs. So our consumption from the battery bank is now at 152 watts. So we've got 152 minus 62 and we're still at 90 watts left that the inverter is consuming. Let's flip on the second breaker here. So now we're at 214 watts of consumption. So 214 minus 124. So we're still at 90 watts of self-consumption of the inverter. So based on that test, we can see that adding a small load does not decrease the self-consumption of the inverter. This inverter is rated at 88% peak efficiency and of course, there's going to be a very specific load that needs applied to see that exact 88% efficiency. It's not going to be 88% efficient at all amounts of load applied to the inverter. And we won't know what that exact amount is without testing several sizes of loads and then graphing it out. I don't know, it's kind of neat that the power saver mode uh, saves electricity in that aspect, but I don't find that very useful or practical at all. And my reasoning for that is simply because I think most of the market that's going to be purchasing these large, heavy, uh, low frequency inverters is going to be using it for running a home, either full off-grid, partially off-grid, or an emergency situation. I just don't foresee many using an inverter like this where there's going to be periods of no load. In a typical house, you're going to constantly have things running. It's going to be a refrigerator, you could have your phone chargers, your laptop chargers, LED lights, things like that. 
I know I've got a water softener that kicks in, my microwave clock, my oven's got a clock. There's just, you, there's not gonna be a period of time ever when there is absolutely zero load such that this inverter can safely shut down. And that brings me to the second reason why I don't like it. You need 25 watts to turn this on and it has to be 25 watts on one specific leg. That 25 watts can't be applied to the second leg and it's gotta be pretty much a resistive load. So if I put a 60 watt light bulb on this, sure, it's gonna turn on. If I plug a space heater, sure, it's gonna turn on. You know, let's say I plug my dehumidifier in. My dehumidifier is not gonna turn this thing on because it's got a soft start. So the dehumidifier turns on and it then waits a couple seconds before it actually kicks the compressor in. So that amount of power that it consumes to check temperature and do whatever else it's gonna do in its startup is not going to be enough to turn this inverter on. You know, let's say I wanna plug my laptop into charge. That's not going to work. Uh, or my desktop computer. I can plug my desktop computer in here because that's greater than 25 watts, but a desktop computer relies on a constant power of three volts from the power supply to the motherboard for you to be able to push that button that tells the power supply to start up. That three volts that it needs to supply to the motherboard is not going to consume 25 watts to turn this inverter on. So your desktop computer is not even gonna work with that functionality. I just don't see any practical use for this functionality Aside from if you're running a very specific appliance for this, such that maybe this is powering a well pump or something like that. In that case, your well pump is probably going to draw the required current when the pressure drops to kick this inverter on. The way it's pulsing electricity like that, now I'm not an engineer by any means, but like let's say I have my desktop computer plugged into this inverter and maybe I have a lamp on the side and I use that lamp to pull enough power to turn that inverter on for the desktop computer to run. I still don't think having this inverter constantly pulsing that electricity like that into the power supply of that computer is good for the power supply of that computer. Part of me does not like the idea of that constant electrical pulsing and I, I can see there being problems with certain appliances. Now sure, something like a light bulb either has an on state or an off state. There's no, you know, somewhat off but still standby state like you'll see on a TV, a receiver, a computer. So it's not gonna hurt a light bulb, but I'm thinking other appliances that are plugged in. So yeah, I think that was a pretty good demonstration and explanation for how that functionality works. I'd love to see what you guys think. You guys can be the judge of whether or not you think that functionality is useful. Uh, tell me what you think down below. Hit that like button and thanks for watching.